Hi, I'm Delaney, and I am a jewelry stylist here at Nina Baronado in Austin, Texas. And today I will be talking a bit about building your own personal jewelry collection. I find people get a little overwhelmed with the constant launches and overconsumption online, and it can be a little bit difficult to figure out what truly works for you in your life. We all often start wearing the same thing over and over and think we are kind of going with the crowd, and obviously that's perfectly okay to do. But if you find yourself wanting to stay a little bit more true to yourself and your own personal style, I'm going to give you some tricks to keep in mind. Also, at the end, I will be giving you a starting shopping list um, to kind of give you a game plan for a good foundation. My first tip is to experiment with vintage or secondhand jewelry. It's a really good way to wear things that are already in circulation. Um, you can still try out pieces that might fit your personal style without having to buy anything new. I would recommend trying on several different kinds of pieces, stones, beads, different metals, um, that way you kind of have a variety to go, oh yeah, this is a good fit. A hot tip is people have estate sales on Etsy sometimes. Um, and those are always really good deals. Just make sure that you're choosing a seller that has a lot of good reviews. Another thing you're gonna wanna keep in mind is the price associated with each item. Solid pieces are often much more expensive than say like a plated piece, a gold plated piece. So if you're looking for something that's like big and eccentric, um, most people should go with something plated unless you're looking to spend a lot more on one piece. But we also have another video all about the details of that so I really recommend you checking that one out as well. Long story short there are great options for every price point however I would really encourage you to look at pieces that are plated at a higher quality um, something with a higher amount of plating so it won't wear off. But if you're buying pieces that are hypoallergenic, have a higher plating quality, and you're storing them properly out of the sun and uh, out of humidity, those pieces are going to last a very long time, if not forever. You'll also want to look at what type of metals look good with your skin tone. Um, I'm one of those lucky people where I wear all the metals, so I mix mine a lot. I wear yellow gold, white gold, rose gold. Um, I even, especially with my rings, like to mix my metals. But it's something that you're gonna have to just play with, play with different trends. Um, it's like going in your mom or your grandma's closet and trying on all their old jewelry. Like, it's just fun. And playing into jewelry trends with the different metals that are like trending are fine, but do yourself a favor and honestly see what color works best for you so you can keep on wearing those pieces over time. You might also want to consider some personalization. Um, this could be engraving, adding a gem, maybe your zodiac sign, making a cute little charm bracelet with symbols that are really meaningful specifically to you. My last tip would be to pay attention to the different sizing. Um, I would take a cloth tape measure and just measure out a couple of different lengths for like where you would want things to fall. That way when you're ordering online, it makes it a lot faster and you already pretty much know if something's gonna work with your personal style. Now let's get down to the nitty gritty, enough tips. Let's pretend you own zero jewelry and you're just looking to get a good foundation down. Some pieces I do recommend you own are a few pairs of like basic studs and you can kind of layer these depending on like what kind of piercings you have. A simple pair of hoops and you can get these in varying sizes. Um, I'm really partial to like the size of like our hand stitched huggies. Um, I think they're perfect. They fit just about everybody's ear type. Um, my sad thing is I have gauges so not necessarily for me but anytime I've seen somebody wear them they just look absolutely excellent and I feel like that's the perfect starting size for a good hoop. The other thing I suggest is kind of a dainty necklace. Um, these are great for layering. I feel like it's a great essential so like you can get that as a base and then start layering different pieces from there. These are a really great base especially if you like the layering look. Layering is very in right now. Um, and I feel like if you're going to go with something super dainty, you can also decide like, oh, I want to wear something shorter this day with it. I want to wear something longer this day with it, depending on like what clothing you're wearing and just your general feel. The one I always suggest is our birthstone necklace. 
um, triangles are very in right now and I feel like it's just a great simple piece that pretty much goes with everything. A delicate ring. This is a great way to just kind of start off um, deciding do you want to go with a clunkier ring? Do you want to add different layers to your rings? What looks good on your fingers? Um, I feel like a good dainty ring that will go with just pretty much everyday wear is a great staple. Finally, a simple understated bracelet. I feel like you could do a removable one, but my suggestion is to do maybe like a couple of permanent bracelets. That way they're always on you. Um, you don't have to worry about taking them off. You can just roll out of bed in the morning and you're already set to go there. Um, and you don't ever have to worry about them tarnishing. That is it for this video, you guys. I would love for you to subscribe to our channel. We have a lot of really cool videos and projects in the works that we think you would love to see. Thanks for watching. Bye.